Hey there! Today we're going to be talking about this pen. Uh, I was at a pen meet and my main man Murray said, why don't you borrow this and do a review on it? And I was actually kind of excited about it because it is a fountain pen by Krone. I'm going to say Krone, but given that their uh, logo is a crown, I'm assuming this might be pronounced Krone. Anyway, I've never reviewed anything from this brand before that I can remember. Um, and there have been one or two reviews, so sometimes I forget, but I don't think I've reviewed this brand before. So it's always interesting for me, and I hope it's also interesting for you to see something different. So, this is the Krone Boulder. Uh, some of these pens are a little harder to get, but I, I still think it's worth a review just because of the, uh, the different brand, right? I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. Okay, so here we go with this Krone Boulder. Let's first look at it right next to a Pilot Metropolitan. As you can see, it's about that length, but a little girthier. Now, I don't have the box for this pen, right? I just took it from Murray uh, uh, at a pen meet. A sip of tea, sorry. Um, and that always makes these videos a little bit shorter. But I'm going to try to cover the parts of the pen and then we'll do a writing sample, of course. So, first of all, this particular pen is made of what they call Chinook uh, uh, material. Whether this is acrylic or celluloid is not entirely clear. I have the feeling it's acrylic, but, I mean, we're not 100% sure. It has sterling silver trim, which I think is quite nice. I'll show you that uh, up close in just a second. It does seem to have a piston filler under a blind cap. I'll get to that when I get to it. And it has an 18 karat medium semi-flex nibs. Nib. Now the question is uh, price. I currently see them pre-owned for about $295 US. So that's, that's pretty much it. As to the material, you can maybe zoom in just a tiny bit more. Uh, a lot of chatoyants very pleasant, sort of looks as sort of like like slightly cracked uh, finish, which, which I like quite a lot. It's very pleasing to the eye, I would say. Okay, on top, finial. Well, there isn't really anything, same material as the rest of the cap. I will say I do like that a lot. Then we have this silver um, clip with the Krone um, logo, Krone, means crown. So there we go, the crown. Then we have this, and I, I find this clip almost a little reminiscent of a sword or maybe a, a heraldic uh, coat of arms. Uh, quite, quite nice. It is fairly stiff. We have a center band with this nice, it almost looks a bit like runes to me, the way these, these uh, diamond shapes interlock. I think it's quite nice. We have this barrel which tapers down and then you can barely see it Looks like it's one piece, but really this is a blind cap and you can take this off. And underneath that is uh, the piston turning knob. This looks a lot like a captive converter to me, like this is the turning knob of a converter. But I'll get back to that. The difference between captive converter and piston is not always clear. And at the end of the day, they both do the same thing, don't they? So the cap unscrews. Then we have the section, not the world's longest section. This looks like a number five nib to me, but it's sometimes hard to see that in isolation. So let me just take out this ASC pen. Yeah, that is a number six. So this nib, the Krone nib must be a number five. Uh, this is an 18 karat gold nib. It is medium. It's supposedly semi-flex. We shall put this to the test. The crown logo is on the nib uh, and there is what looks to be a plastic feed. The section does not unscrew so we cannot assess slash ascertain uh, whether there actually is a captive converter in there. What I will say is fairly short section. I do think the number five nib was a good choice, otherwise I think it would look out of proportion with the section. Overall though, I feel that a number six nib would have been nice. It's not the world's biggest pen, um, and it sort of posts, if I remember correctly. It does post, 
you know, pretty nicely sized pen. Um, section tapers down and that's all there's to it. What we need to see next is how it writes and we're going to do that. Did not yet flip over my page, I'm sorry, but here we are. Here we have the Krohn um, boulder with an 18k medium nib and the ink, I don't know, I got it from Mary with this ink in it. Um, for me, unposted, the pen is a little too little, so I will use it posted, just a general comment. And as you can see, then you have a nicely sized pen. There was one hard start there. But that may have been me. The pen just write very nicely. For the record, I, I do write with them before I review them, obviously. I'm just saying. I haven't seen a lot of hard starts with this. Also, there is a little bit of a gap between the paper there, so that might cause this. Um, what was I doing? Very fast writing. Keeps up, the feed keeps up really pretty well. What about wetness? Fairly wet writer. Line variation. Round nib. Railroad. Go a little slower. I could certainly see how someone might label this semi-flex. You do seem to be able to get some line variation out of it and it doesn't feel like you're hurting the nib. For those of you who enjoy such a thing, reverse writing is fully possible. A little bit scratchier, but as you can see, the nib stays nice and wet and takes that medium to, I would say, a fine or maybe a slightly chubby extra fine. There we go. I hope this was useful so far. Let's discuss pros and cons of the Crone Boulder. It is pretty. Look at that shit, twins. Uh, yeah, sweet. What do I like? What do I not like about the Crone Boulder? Um, there are a couple of things that I really like. I think this is a size that works for a lot of people. For me, it could have been a little bit bigger, but that's a personal preference. I think this works well for a lot of people, and especially when posted. I think it is pretty um, uh, nice for... I, there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all, but a one-size-fits-most, I think. I think the most important part of a pen for me, as always, is how it writes. And it is indeed a very nice writer. So I can certainly see how, how people would really like these pens for that matter, provided that they all write like this. I also think the material is really quite nice. It has some uh, uh, per lessons, that's not exactly the word I'm looking for, but chatoyance is the word I'm looking for, these sort of shiny bits that you see that reflect the light very nicely. That's very nice, a lot of people really like that. There was a little bit of confusion. Uh, Murray thought it was celluloid. There are some reports online that it's acrylic. Um, there is the standard test not really smelling any camphor i'm going to go with an acrylic but it's it's hard to say sometimes we're not going to do a chemical analysis these are all things i like uh, it's a little difficult to talk about the price because as i said this is not something you can just go into the store and pick up they seem to be um, discontinued but i've seen them for around 295 300 dollars on chatterley luxuries ebay like these kinds of sites I think that's a reasonably fair price, especially given it has a gold nib. Um, so I, I, I like that. Things I don't like, the step down is pretty substantial. I've, I've recorded a bunch of videos in a row and it's interesting that I find myself talking about the step downs a lot. Um, just a coincidence in this particular batch of pens I'm reviewing, I suppose. But it's, it's, it's there. And it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, so I have to block out my face entirely, it's definitely a bit noticeable. 
and that I, I know some people would find that annoying and because it is not beveled in any way, it's just a straight edge, uh, it, you definitely feel that. It's, it's sharper to the touch and because the section is not the world's largest section, I do think you will feel that for extended writing sessions regardless of hand size. So that's my, my biggest concern. Beyond that, I think it's kind of nice. Uh, it seems to have a, a captive converter. Um, they say piston filler. I'm not quite sure if it's a piston filler. I think it's a captive converter, but then again, what is here but there without the T? You know, it's something built in that draws up ink. So that is fine with me. That's all I have to say about the pen. I think it's nice. I particularly really like the material. So. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye!